Hi friends! Today is going to be the February TBR Takedown. I feel like I'm getting later and later filming these because it's like March 17th right now, but hey, who cares? At least we're getting it done. If you are unaware, the TBR Takedown is a game that I've been playing trying to get my physical unread TBR shelf down from a really high number down to something more manageable, probably around 50. I am starting out the month of February at 116 books and we're going to go through the books that I hold, the books that I read, books that I DNF'd, if they counted, if they didn't count. We're just going to talk about everything from February. It's not a lot, so we're not going to be here very long. The first thing that I read this month is If It Gets Out by Sophie Gonzalez and Kale Dietrich. I gave this a 3.75 out of 5 stars. It was a ARC, so it does not count as coming off of my TBR. It was also in my previous ARC Reads video, so if you want to know more about my full thoughts of that, I will link it in the description box down below for you. This book follows two young boys who are part of a boy band called Saturday, and they are falling in love essentially and it talks a lot about how dealing with their management team and society and what the, their fan base wants for them and what management wants for them and kind of having to hide who they are um, being gay men in a boy band. Very interesting book. Love Sophie Gonzalez from here until forever. So check out the ARC video if you want to know more of my full thoughts. I then read Written and Read by Ann Bishop. Finally! Um, so this book has been on my TBR for quite a few years. I gave this a three out of five stars. This book is about a girl named Meg, who we start off the book, she is running away and she's scared and we don't know who she's running from or why. But we find that she is running from people who had her captured and she runs to this sanctuary for what they call the others. And the others are essentially like werewolves, shapeshifters, vampires, um, a bunch of different, basically all of the fantasy creatures that we have in our world. Um, the book at the very beginning goes through like some world building on how like the others were created and how we were created and how like the societies have kind of brushed up against each other. It is kind of like, um, a, pre a prelude, a prologue, if you will. Um, but I felt it was very interesting to, it, it was an interesting read. It wasn't like a prologue where you're like, oh my god, here we are. Um, I felt like it was necessary for being thrown in the middle of a world with no context. It's also only a single page front and back. So like, it's not like it's the end of the world. I liked this. I think that it was a good book. Um, it was not a whole lot of plot, but I liked the world building part of it. I do feel like Meg is the quintessential Mary Sue. Like she shows up at this town and she's magically able to solve all of their problems even though like there's nothing really special about her. There is kind of something special about her but that's not really what's doing anything for people if you get what I'm saying. There was a character in here that I did not like. Her name is Asia. And she is like a side villain. And I feel like having her point of view gives away too much of the plot and too much of what the villains are doing. So there's no real surprises of like what's going to happen because Meg can see the future and we're getting Asia's point of view um, as one of the villains. So it's like everything that happens we already know is going to happen. So three stars. It was a good start. I don't know if I'm going to continue on with the series. Probably not, but... I might be swayed. I'm gonna talk to some people that I know have read the first book and see like if it's worth it. Okay. Next is a book that I hauled and that is Skin of the Sea by Natasha Bowen. This was a, I think this was an owl crate from like December that just got here. It might, no, I think it was December. Yeah, it was forever ago because I canceled owl crate forever ago. Uh, this was the December book. I don't really know what this is about. I know that our main character is like a mermaid and she, I believe her job is to collect souls of people who have died and been thrown overboard on ships. And she saves the life of a boy who's thrown over who's still kind of alive. And she has to, which is against the rules, and she has to like go um, to the creator and pray for amends of some sort. I don't really know. Um, 
it's beautiful it's gorgeous I have been looking towards this one we're always looking for a good mermaid book and there are so few good mermaid books so I'm hoping that this one lives up to the hype I then shortly thereafter hauled a lullaby for witches by Hester Fox this was the unplugged book box adult box pick for January it may have also been December no this was February this was February because January was Julie's book I already got that one so this one is February what am I doing who knows not me don't know what this one is about but I know that it has like a multi I don't want to say a multi-generational but a multi-timeline it has a multiverse it has a dual timeline of sorts um so there's like an old family and I think one of them was accused of witchcraft or was questionably a witch and then there's a girl that goes there in the modern time and then somehow their two worlds collide I don't really know it's pretty I've heard good things about Hester Fox's writing before so I am excited to get to this one if I ever fucking get through all of the arcs that I have I then read The Plot by Jean Hanf Korlitz and I gave that 3.5 out of 5 stars. It follows a guy who is a professor. He had previously written a moderately popular book and has been unsuccessful in writing anything since then. As a professor he has this male student who comes to him and is like I have the best plot for a book ever and uh, the professor thinks that this kid is just blowing smoke up his ass but he tells him the plot and he's like you know what? This kid is going to blow it out of the water. Yes, dear. Hi, babes. What's up? Nothing. Just miss you. Okay. I saw you were working, so I was like, you know what she wants? She wants a call. I'm in the middle of filming, so a call is perfect. So the kid tells the professor the story, and he's like, fuck, this kid's right. It's going to sell so great. Basically, he sits back and waits for hearing about this story blowing up. Well, lo and behold, it doesn't blow up and he doesn't know why. So he starts to do some research on this kid and finds out that he had died very shortly after their um, classes had ended. And so he's like, you know what? Nobody else is telling this story. I'm going to tell the story. So he writes, publishes, and becomes superbly famous. He's on Oprah. He's a bestseller. You can buy his book, you know, at the airport. Like, you can buy his book anywhere. Everybody is talking about it because of that plot. And then he gets a letter that's like, sir, I know you saw this plot. I know you saw this story. I think this book was okay, but the plot of the book was not great. I saw the plot twist coming from three million miles away. Um, both plot twists, like the plot twist for, well, yeah, the, the plot twists, seen them coming, not the greatest. I did like the topics of like plagiarism, being a story thief, being a plot thief, and kind of the ethics and moral compasses behind that aspect of it, which is one reason why you can find out more of my thoughts and Kate Kavanaugh's thoughts in our AuthorTube chat from February. It was our book club pick for the month. And so we had a discussion about it in February. I'll link that down below for you as well if you would like to check that out and know more of our full thoughts. I then read Love at First Spite by Anna E. Collins. I gave that a four out of five stars. It was an arc, so it doesn't count as coming off of my list. It is about a girl who finds out that her fiance is cheating on her and so she breaks up with him and in order to get back at him she buys this property across the street from him that blocks his view of the ocean and then she decides she wants to build a really big house on it. No, it's not across the street. It's next to. It's like they're here and then it's next to it and then there's the ocean. And she told him when they bought the house that they should also buy the property next to it because they bought the house they were going to move in together. That was going to be, you know, where they lived out the rest of their years prior to the cheating. And she was like, we should buy this property. So no one buys this property and builds a house on it. And he's like, no, it's cool. So she buys the property and builds a house on it for spite. Uh, but of course, in the midst of that, she also has to work with someone from her office who is kind of standoffish and grumpy. And it's a very grumpy sunshine romance. It's a enemies to lovers, kind of hate to lovers. They're not really enemies. You know what I'm saying, though. It's definitely grumpy sunshine. Um, and it was super cute. Um, not like the most plot driven book ever, but cute. I did enjoy the romance. I also reviewed this one in a recent ARCS video, so I will link it in the description box down below also as well. I then DNF'd How to Love Your Neighbor by Sophie Sullivan. Uh, I DNF'd that at 40%. 
it is about a girl who is left a house by her grandparents who she never knew and she's like trying to fix it up and make it cute and that's kind of like her what she does she's an interior decorator I think or an interior designer either way she that's her that's her spiel okay and her neighbor is this rich kid who's always been given everything that he ever wanted and he wants to design this house because his family is like big into real estate and he wants to design this house and buy her a lot so that he can build his house onto that lot and make his house bigger and you know enemies to lovers all that jazz. I felt like this was a way too similar to the book I had just like put down and then picked this one up which was Love vs. Spite but I also had some major issues with the tension between our love interests and they very much were like from the second you meet them on the page they have like all of this sexual tension and angst and they're like in their heads they're saying things like I really just want to like throw them up against the wall and kiss them and they are so fantastic and all this that and the other but then they're in the middle of like a screaming match and this didn't happen like one time and not two times it happened no less than six times in the 40% that I read and I was just not here for that romance it was the book itself as far as like there there was this plot of like you know the old people and how cute the old people are I love old people in books um love it for spite has a little old lady that I love um but I just they're very similar the romance was not viable for me and I feel like if you're reading a romance the romance has to be viable and if you're not believing it then it's not the book for you uh, again, this will be in my ARC Reads video because it's an ARC, so more of my full thoughts there. If you were keeping track, and why would you, because I do it up here for you, I started the month at 116. I read one book that came off my shelf. I purchased two books that went on my shelf. That means we're back at 117, which is where we started out the year. I'm not doing great this year. I'm kind of having an existential crisis about it. Like I'm not reading very much. I don't know why I'm not. I mean, I guess I'm in a little bit of a reading slump, but I also have a million and a half arcs to get through. But also like my arcs, I'm so far behind on them that I have audiobooks for all of them. So it's not even like, because usually my reason for not reading arcs is like, oh, well, I don't like ebooks. Well, that's great. But you have audiobooks of these. So like, why are you not reading them? I also started reading a Brandon Sanderson the other day, which that video will be coming soon too. Uh, reading Brandon Sanderson for the first time. Uh, spoiler alert for the future um but I was like gonna finish it on Sunday it's now Thursday and I just like haven't picked it back up enjoying it haven't picked it back up I've been reading uh the second book in the Shades of Magic trilogy by V.E. Schwab which I have been loving for six months <laughs> just stopped somewhere never picked it back up there was another one I was reading too um I started reading something else that I picked up and read for a couple of weeks and then just bounced on it and that's just kind of where I'm at right now guys I don't know how much uh, booktube content there's going to be this year because your girl is not on the reading train I'm trying uh normally February is my highest reading month of the year and I think I read five books this month where are we at one two three I read four books this month plus dnf one plus read parts of one uh, it's not it's not going great for me that is all I have for today I post reading writing book and planner related videos very rarely if ever at this point if you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification button down below I do plan to be posting more in the future I'm trying to get there I promise until then I'll see you guys next time bye My heart is so hollow, the